Barbies, how are you today? This is Mr. Byron in the disguise voice. No, how you doing, everybody? Uh, seeing what's going on. You can see what's going on in my fish tank today. This is Ernie and Bert, and uh, they are a angelfish. They're angelfish. They are angelfish. Uh, we do have a shark in there. Um, but he's, uh, he's kind of hiding this morning. He might come out. Um, there's also an eel in there as well. So, um, sharks, eels, or shark, eel, and two angel fish. Um, the skill testing question is, uh, you know, what's their names? What are the names of the angel fish? If you can uh, put that up on the post, uh, you'll get an extra point, uh, an extra piece of, uh, gum, uh, sugar-free gum as always, uh, and so forth. I'm going to uh, read you, and hopefully you've uh, seen the uh, earlier post today um, on the preview of the uh, Lobster Chronicles. Um, we are going to read the first book of the trilogy. Uh, it's called Lower the Trap. And uh, as I said before, this is a book um, is created by uh, Jessica Scott Karen. K-E-R-R-I-N, um, and so forth. So I did read you the preview. Uh, when you go into a bookstore and you're looking for a book, uh, and you want to know maybe, is this book the right book for me? Uh, usually on the back um, of the book. But this one here is uh, uh, illustrations on the front, uh, Lower the Trap, uh, The Lobster Chronicles. This is book, uh, as you said, number one, coming from our library. Uh, it's top 20 top 20 uh, and you know they kind of did some uh, illustrations there I uh, and so forth and then on the back was a wonderful illustration of uh, another lobster um, this is what they look like when they come out of the water uh, they're greenish uh, they're bluish they're all different types of uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me <coughs> excuse me uh, all different types little colors of the sea you know so that they're kind of camouflaged so here we go um and so forth once again it is a book by uh, uh jessica scott uh karen uh text is uh, uh copyrighted in 2012 illustrations uh also copyrighted in 2012 uh by kids can press uh it is a 2025 uh, dockside drive in uh, toronto ontario um and so forth so here we go uh chapter one uh floater number four floater number four um i dangle uh lynette by her ankles off the gunwale a uh, jeremy swimmer swinimer which is a common name in nova scotia swore to herself when i discovered a mummy cog floating sideways in his plastic saltwater tub its lifeless speckled body bobbed above the sand dollars, the periwinkles, brittle, brittle sea stars, urchins, and rock crab, all part of his marine life collection. This was a little collection that he had. Lynette was always feeding her food to the fish. What else could explain the soggy banana and peanut butter sandwiches? Crusts off, hanging in the water. Wow, beautiful sandwiches, uh, one of my favorites as a child, and also uh, a favorite of us when we go to Port Hood Beach in, in Cape Breton is to uh, collect a few of the, uh, you know, the crabs, and then, you know, have them in, in re re redo their water and stuff like that, and then release them uh, before we go. So it's one of the things we snorkel for uh, around Port Hood Beach, so it was kind of cool, um, the connection there. We move on. A dead giveaway, and this was our fourth floater since the start of the spring lobster season. Graham sighed, ankles dangling would, ang ankle dangling would have, uh, have to wait because his little sister was at the playground with her buddies from the after school program. He could hear the screams of glee way off in the distance, along with the pop 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 sound of the uh, homerus to uh, his dad's. Uh, mint green Cape Islander uh, motoring home for the day. Graham cast about his room for the fishnet. 
He checked underneath his aquarium magazine, cold marine tanks. Uh, He skirted past his poster of sharks, whales, and sea turtles, and scanned the top of his sock and underwear dresser. He turned to the other side of his room, which featured a large plaque of sailor knots mounted next to his closet door. Another uh, interesting is fact, or fact, or, or something, is that I had to do these sailor knots while I was in sailing school in Bedford, Nova Scotia. Um, ah, there it was, hooked on the knob. He remembered that he had hung the net to dry after scooping a floater number three just a last week. Graham stood across his room, round. Br- stood across his room's round braided rug to retrieve the net. He then dipped into the saltwater tub to recover the limp fish. Down the hall he plodded, drip, 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 in the yellow bathroom with a wickered clothes hamper that faintly whiffed of lobster and diesel. Graham stopped in front of the toilet, plopped the fish, whoosh went the bowl, and goodbye down the drain. Then, as a payback, he grabbed Lynette's hairbrush and plunged it into the deep of the smelly clothes hamper. Why? Because you can find it. Graham returned to the scene of the crime and wrote up the incident report in his scientific journal. He included the usual details, the date, the time, and the type of mammal, and the probable cause of death. Entered completely, he closed his notes, then gazed into the saltwater tub to observe the remainder of the school of mummy clogs frolicking between the barnacles of the covered rocks. Apparently unaware of the recent decrease in numbers, Graham going to the marine Graham's going to be a marine biologist, his dad boasted regularly at the government wharf next to the lucky catch cannery where he unloaded his lobsters a long time widower mr swinnemer was determined that graham follow his dream despite the challenges of having to raise him and lynette alone can't wait graham always at it so he was eager riding the wave is his of his dad's enthusiasm the other fisherman would reply by thumping his back good naturedly with the sausage fingered hands I'll be, it'll be nice to find how a local scientist who knows what what is going on around here, they would say, it would be finally nice to have a local scientist. This is if Graham goes to school and, and completes his things. Fishermen often argued with come from away biologists about the state of the lobster stock in lower narrow spit. But they argued even more with the owner of the town's only cannery about the price for their daily catch. From the open window above his desk, Graham heard the putt he had slow that had slowed down to a dull throb. His dad was maneuvering around the shawls of the entrance to the harbor. The sea is a big as all the outdoors, he said. And he reminded this to Gabe, uh, to uh, Graham. But you best mind the rocks in the bay. Graham understood what that meant. Even though his dad supported his career choice, he also believed that Graham should know everything about his home port before safely venturing further away out into the open ocean. Which was true, except that Graham had run out of fresh discoveries. He even knew exactly how many steps it took to get from their white shingled home to the government wharf where he collected his specimens to study. For Graham, the unexplored sea beckoned. The reverberation of the engine changed again. The and Graham realized that his dad must be getting closer to the wharf by now. Preparing to throw the lines when he heard that his dad had cut the engine, Graham had to get a move on. He raced past the bathroom, down the stairs, froze when he heard a knock at the door of the screen door. A bothersome voice he recognized called out from covered, from uncovered porch. Graham, you home? Jeez Louise, Graham muttered with his, when he saw who it was. 
Hi, Norris, Graham said flatly, talking through the screen door, arms crossed. I was just leaving to meet my dad. Norris was Graham's least favorite classmate. Unlike the rest of the school, Norris loved dodgeball. And he hammered slow-moving players every chance he got. Norris was always telling everyone what he thought, even when no one even cared. He had the annoying habit of jingling coins in his pocket whenever he started to argue, which was all the time. And Norris was the only boy Graham knew who had the audacity to use the front door rather than the one off the kitchen mudroom. Norris stared, stared at Graham with his closed set eyes and smiled with his mud full of shining braces. He held a large cupboard box stamped with Lucky Catch Cannering logo. Norris's dad was the Lucky Catch's owner, so the logo was a smudge reminder of their family's uncommon wealth. Now what I've got? Know what I got? Asked Norris in his weaselly voice. Graham could not help noticing that Norris had covered his large forehead with a big fish ball cap, a souvenir from the biggest aquarium in the world. Norris's family always spent their vacations far away from the campgrounds surrounding Lower Narrow Spit. Graham's grudging, Graham grudgingly pushed open the screen door and stepped onto the front porch, careful not to disturb Fetch, Fetch his family's gray muzzled beagle, who spent most of the time impersonating a rug. Nora sat down, set down the box and opened the lid. He reached in it and lifted out a patchy patterned kitten, one ear black, the other white. The kitten wiggled and struggled about with pitiful mules while Fetch observed the fuss by momentarily lifting his head. No wonder you're scratched up, observed Graham, noting that Ar Norris's arms was covered in angry red marks. You're holding her all wrong. Here, let me. He retrieved the kitten from Norris and showed him how to cradle the kitten properly. The kitten immediately burrowed into Graham's chest and began to purr. Would you, would you look at that, Norris said. Then, with a, without missing a beat, he added, Think you could help me solve an even bigger problem? Depends, says Graham. He was only half listening because the kitten was now licking his neck with her, with her thick, 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 pink sandpaper tongue. I'm in big trouble, said Norris. One of Mrs. Penfield's cacti is missing. Graham looked up. Mrs. Penfield was his favorite teacher. And for reasons known only to her, she had assigned Norris all of the students to take care of her prized plant collection at school while she was off having a baby. Missing, asked Graham. Which one? The one with the orange flower on top, said Norris. I was on the swings after school today and then I remembered I had to water the plants. So I came back in. Only the cacti wasn't there anymore. Only the cactus wasn't there anymore. So when I came back in, only the cactus wasn't there anymore. Mrs. Penfield told me that it took years to flower, Graham said. It was a fact that had made a note in his scientific journal. All I know is that she is planning on entering it in the uh, Lobster Festival plant show. Norris lamented, and now it's gone. Well, there's got to be a logical explanation, said Graham, rubbing the kitten against his cheek. Graham prided himself on applying scientific rules and deductions whenever possible. You know what I think, said Norris. I, it was not a question. I think someone has stolen the cactus. Someone who doesn't like me. Norris dug into his pocket and produced a folded piece of paper, which, which he handed to Graham to open. Here is my list of suspects. That is the end of the first chapter. And, and we're going to cut it there, and then I'll revisit you in about well, a little while. Bye now.